the action is sort of low key, but you know they didn't have a big budget behind it. They have a sizable budget because the way I know it wasn't filmed in New York, but the way you know, the, it looks, it looks great. You know the the rubbles of the city and you know the terrors of the night. Like he's with this girl, Susan Hubley, who used to be, I think, he used to be Kurt Russell's wife, girlfriend or wife. But like, I mean, she gets taken down to the sewers by the chuds and not the chuds, but might as well be. And you know, a little bit of action. He's like, you know, shooting out the wall. Even though when he shoots out the wall and he gets in, it looks like uh, it looks like cardboard. Like that was one thing that bothered me. Mean, like I know it's low budget, but he shoots the big hole, jumps in, and it looks like cardboard. Like well, it has the sound of like paper. It's like, wow, these are really paper thin to a new limit. <laughs> but I didn't like fuck it, you know. It didn't bother me that much, but I just wanted to point it out. You did. But one more can I say about this movie. You also have Tom Atkins in a small role as one of the guys with Lee Van Cleef. I mean it's a great idea. Snape Plisson as an iconic looking and kind of acting performance. It's just an iconic character. Good bits of action, uh, some little bits of sly humor. Like, uh, you kind of care about these characters, especially near the end where you know they're driving and you know Cabby gets killed in the bomb on the bridge. You know, there's a mines on the bridge, and Brain gets killed. He gets blown up, and yet that moment where she sure just does this. And Kurt Russell's like looking at her like, no, don't do this. Then it's like, okay, I understand it and I respect it and I hate to see you go. But what's great is that it's to a point where you don't have to have dialogue for that. He just say that with a look. And like they have this, this look between each other and it's like, okay, I respect you. I hate that you're doing this, but I respect you. And actually when he gives her to her, he gives her like a little smile like, yeah, definitely not someone... Uh, it seems like Snape Plessy sort of judges people in this and the second one. It's like he looks at people and he sort of finds out how they really tick and sort of does things that sort of, you know, are you really worthy? Are you really who you think you are? Are you a two-faced some bitch? I, that's why I like that about Snape Plessy either. Especially near the end where, you know, unfortunately, your Barbeau makes your last stand and dies. And actually, they run off. Caruso and you know the Duke's dead and they're back and they've gotten the thing out and this is what I talk about Caruso you know he has the tape and he goes you know I just want to talk about you know all the people who died the Dow Plus of course in the smud go you know well yeah I want to thank them for their sacrifice and all this bullshit and Saints like oh, fuck you dude fuck you and your high horse and of course, that great ending where he gives him the wrong fucking tape. He gives him like this Broadway tape. And he's walking, you know, smoking, fucking tearing up the tape. That great music, fade to black as he walks out of the camera. That's a great way to end a movie. It's like, fuck the system. Fuck the system. Fuck the system. I love it. I mean, John Carpenter is like, fuck the system. Fuck authority. Which, I mean, I like. I mean, I like that about John Carper and his movies and his heroes. And, you know, I mean, problems with the movie? I mean, some of his low-budget shows, I mean, the special effects of the the hang glider going into the city, or like when they're chopping, these people are chopping the, the hang glider, which actually gives a... I think Harry Dan Stanton says, Goddamn red... Uh, what is it? Goddamn Redskins! Something like that. But you, and then they chop in, you see the hand glider fall off the building. It looks very, you know, it looks cheap. I know it's low budget, but I could bullshit you, but it does look cheap. I know, I think James Cameron was one of the guys who worked on the effects on the film. But, I mean, it is a low budget, and they did what, you know, I, do, I would take this over CGI. But I, I could bullshit and say, oh, they're perfect, but they're not perfect. Again, the hand glider was like, eh. And some of the action scenes, again, for a low budget, it's like they're just very quick. And, you know, it's not over the top, you know, guns blazing. 
And you know, maybe it's a good thing. You know, I was going to say it's a bad thing, but maybe it's a good thing. You know, maybe it fits the film. It wasn't over the top, fucking Michael Bay, which I like Michael Bay movies, believe it or not. But fuck it. But great anti-hero, awesome cast. The way they used the sets were solid. Um, awesome soundtrack, you know, score. Um, characters that you go to like. You know, I like Adrian Barbeau, and I like, you know, even uh, Ernest Borgnine, and uh, you know, Kurt Russell, of course. The fuck you to the establishment. But, you know, it was one of those films that, you know, some people, oh, you know, the low budget special effects or whatever, but it's not a special effects movie. It's just, it's a very solid action film. And yes, I know there's talk of a remake. I'm sure it'll happen sometime. It's gonna suck. But I can't stop it. What I tend to do is sit down and watch this again. Um, I don't really find that too many problems with it. So, I'm gonna sign off. And of course, next time, I will be talking about the much hated or despised or just looked down, frowned on sequel, Escape from L.A., a film that I do love. And if you want to know why, stay tuned until next time. Thanks for watching. Take care.